Hi everyone! I have been wanting to make this video for a while and I've actually run into a lot of problems. This is actually the third time I'm recording this video. So, the first time I had lipstick on my teeth and I could not take myself seriously, so I re-recorded it. it. It ended up entirely getting deleted. And now I'm trying again, so hopefully third time's a charm. Um, but I just wanted to welcome you guys back. I'm so happy and thankful for the new subscribers that I have, so I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. I'm so happy that my family here is growing. And with all of that said, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So this video I know might be a little bit controversial, um, but I've just been seeing story after story and um, article after article of people that are um, Indian or Desi or, you know, just have Asian parents even that are really uh, just strict and that are really just struggling with like things to do in life and I think we all you know struggled with our parents when we were teenagers and that kind of thing and that's natural um, but a lot of these stories are struggling with their parents in adulthood and kind of not knowing where to go from here and not really having a relationship but feeling like they owe their parents something so I just wanted to touch on a lot of that in this video and this topic is so extensive so by no means am I saying everything that needs to be said on this topic. I'm just kind of getting into parts of what I've noticed and just some things that I wanted to bring up and talk about and just start a conversation about. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this goes and I'm potentially even can make this into a series and talk about even more problems and things like that um, that are issues in our community, I guess. So this video is mainly geared towards like um, Desi girls, Indian girls, um, Pakistani girls. So if you fit into that category, um, then I guess that's kind of who I'm talking to. But um, you might be able to relate if you are just a woman of color or even if you have Asian parents, like there's probably a lot of overlap in experiences here. So um, I guess that's what intersectionality is. Um, so just stay tuned and let me know in the comments below if or what you relate to. Um, so something that I really wanted to talk about is that I recently started getting back on Reddit. I hadn't been on since like high school and I found a lot of um, Asian parent communities, um, uh, Indian communities, um, American Indian communities. And so I've been, you know, kind of active on these pages and just looking and reading through other people's stories. And a lot of what I see on different kinds of pages like this completely overlap. So a lot of what our experiences are, are shaped by, you know, how our parents see the world and how they treat us and what we're, what our expectations are. And there's a lot of good sides to that. By no means am I trying to um, bring down our culture or make anyone feel like, you know, our culture is bad or wrong or holding us back. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. But there are lots and lots of issues of people feeling guilty for having a boyfriend or girlfriend when they're, you know, in their mid-20s. People feeling guilty for choosing the career that they're in. People feeling guilty for leaving their hometowns or not moving back in with their parents after school. People feeling guilty for not letting the, their in-laws move in with them or feeling like they have to have their in-laws move in with them after they get married. Um, there's you know so many different problems that I've seen that aren't limited to being a teenager aren't limited to even living in your parents house but they're just constant issues that kind of shape our daily lives and so that's what I really wanted to touch on in this video the first thing that I wanted to say is that we're the first generation that, that has as many options as we have like of all Indian women you know a lot of times you had to get married you had to um, even with things like sati you know that was a long time ago but widows had to basically commit suicide because their husbands had passed away. So there is such a long way that we've come. And the thing is, it wasn't always that way. There's like the courtesan era and times in India where things were a lot more free. And I'm just talking about India because I'm Gujarati, so that's where I'm from. I can't really speak for every other culture in the Desi community, but if you have other experiences, definitely just let me know in the comments below. Again, I want this to be a conversation. Um, this doesn't have to be just me spewing out my opinions and you having to all listen to it, so I want this to be like an interactive experience. However, um, we, you know, have come such a long way and, you know, with things like education, I mean, there's still plenty of females and women in India that aren't allowed education, that are expected to do more things around the home or the farm um, or the village and not really give themselves that time to be educated. So the fact that, you know, us in other countries or us who've immigrated, um, even plenty of us in India or in, you know, motherland countries have the privilege to be able to be educated, to go to college, to, you know, pursue um, a career path afterwards, to maybe not even get married right away, or maybe not even have to have an arranged marriage. We can find our own partner 
Um, so there's a lot, a lot of freedom that we've gained in the last number of decades that weren't always there before. So that's just something that I wanted to point out there because yes, there's so much more that we still deserve and still need to have in so many ways that we're not obviously there yet in terms of like feminism or in terms of equal rights. However, um, you know, we can say that, you know, we have more than our grandmothers did. We have more than our mothers did. We have, um, you know, just more opportunity. And the, that brings me to my next point is that we create culture. So obviously, you know, we were growing up, you know, being taught what culture is going to um, parties and family festivals and, um, you know, gatherings with family friends and celebrating in certain kinds of holidays and dressing up and eating certain foods. And, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And, um, you know, Desi cultures are so absolutely rich with culture and holidays and festivals and gatherings. And they're super, super social as well. Um, and there's so much fun and so much livelihood that goes into it. But we get taught a single idea of what culture is a lot of the time. We get passed down from our parents and from our elders, you know, what our expectations are, what we should be doing, what good Indian girls do, what good they see girls or they see women do. And that can be really frustrating when we represent something that's outside of that narrative. Like, even if we're slightly more tomboyish, or even if we don't love cooking, like there could be so many little things that don't really affect the overall package of how great we are as a person and how womanly we are. But those things can be enough to like, set off plenty of like elders and aunties who are here to tell you that you know what you need to cook how else are you going to find a man or how else are you going to keep a husband or raise a family like there's so many things like that that we're expected to do that are expectations regardless of whether we have any interest or not and in some ways that's really good because we get pushed out of our comfort zone and we get pushed to learn new things but when there's only a set certain box of expectations that you can fit into it becomes really really frustrating and it's hard to grow it's hard to figure out who you are when you when that's already determined for you you know when that doesn't have anything to do with your personality traits and your interests it's about you represent this box to society this is what your role is and that's what you're supposed to do that becomes your personality that becomes who you are in your identity and you don't really get to explore outside of that box a lot of the time and so when we're taught you know that culture is um, you know, staying inside and cooking for your family and, you know, kind of being the stay-at-home mom or, and that's fine if that's what you want, but when you're taught that that's what an Indian woman looks like and that's the only thing that we can be, that's obviously damaging, you know what I mean? Because even if that's genuinely what you want to do, that makes it something that you have to do instead of something that you chose to do. It's not coming from your intrinsic desire to do that. It's something that you'd be forced to do even if you didn't want to. And so that in itself is something that's like a little bit iffy. But the reason that I'm talking about this is that culture is dynamic. Like culture, you know, the Indian culture and what it represents today in 2019 in this globalized world in terms of immigrants and, you know, British Asians or American, um, like Indians in America or Indians in Australia. Like we all have these different aspects of what we bring to the table and these kind of cultural mishmashes. And even with my family, the last few generations of my family lived in Africa. So they, you know, kind of merged together parts of African culture and parts of Indian culture and that became part of their culture, you know? So now my parents relate more to Kenyan lifestyles than they do with, you know, necessarily Indian lifestyles because they didn't even grow up with that. So what it means to be Indian in 2019 is so, so different than what it meant to be Indian in 1940 during partition or in 1920 or, you know, in any other time in the past, you know, it's completely different and culture is dynamic. It's always changing. So why do we feel like we have to be this certain tiny little box of what our expectations are when we are Indian? Like we, there's no such thing as being Indian enough or Desi enough or Pakistani enough. We are what we are because we intrinsically are that. That's our ethnicity. That's our heritage. That's where we came from. And so when that is your blood and that's who you are, there's no such thing as you not being enough of that culture or representing that culture enough. No one person can represent an entire culture. It's never going to work that way. That's why there's so many different types of people, regardless of what nationality you are. You know, there's so many different kinds of personalities, even if you only had a group of one nationality in one room, there's still so many different kinds of people that you could have. So there, it's ridiculous to think that one person in one role and one entity could like depict and show the rest of the world what that culture represents. And so we should take it upon ourselves to 
feel that we are worthy enough of creating what our culture is. What we're going to teach our nieces and daughters and, you know, youth is what we show by example and what we live by. So if we're telling ourselves and accepting what elders say to us that you can only be a good Indian woman if you are these four or five things and nothing else outside of that box will count, then we end up internalizing that, feeling that, and putting that pressure on ourselves, then pushing that onto the next generation and creating this tiny little box of what what our children should be and what our expectations of ourselves and them should be. And that limits our culture and it limits what we can accomplish and what we can do. When we choose to celebrate our strengths, I'm not like, and we can choose to, you know, major in, in careers that we like or choose to actually follow paths that are like talents that we have that are genuine things that we're passionate about. When we allow ourselves to find those differences about ourselves and use that to bring our culture to light, we're doing so much more and we're making our culture so much more dynamic than saying that, you know, this is what was taught me, taught to me and that's what it has to be. And that's kind of what carries around that older set of ideals that doesn't necessarily fit into today's modern world. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it becomes really hard. That's where a lot of us, like in our generation, deal with a lot of cognitive dissonance, especially when either we were born in a different country or we immigrated ourselves, like I did. We end up being completely unsure of who we are. We feel like, you know, being, in my experience, being American was completely the opposite of being Indian, and I could never merge the two, and I was always feeling guilty or feeling like I didn't fully belong in one or the other. And that's an inherent experience that a lot of us that immigrate are going to have, but I think that we can close that gap and make it smaller and make it so that our children face less of that dissonance because of us being able to say, you know what, I can be an amazing like fashion magazine editor and I can be a strong Indian woman and I can choose to cook or choose not to cook and I can choose who I love and I can pass on that torch of being a hardworking, amazing, creative, fantastic, you know, family oriented person onto the next generation, but I can do that through love and through openness and through acceptance rather than beating down this certain idea of what you have to be and contorting yourself and holding yourself back to make sure that that's the only thing that you can possibly ever put out into the world. Does that make sense? Um, so that's something that I feel really strongly about. Like culture is constantly dynamic and changing and being created. So we should feel like we can take it upon ourselves to um, be that example for the next generation. Um, and along that same lines, you know, it's even if you don't have kids, there is another generation around you. There's coworkers and there's people younger than you and there's people that you interact with or nieces or nephews or other family members that are younger. And you should be able to, you know, come to them and, and inspire them to be bold and to be different instead of to be fearful, you know, because I feel like I was taught a lot of that. I was taught a lot of fear growing up and it was from a number of different sources, but that's so hard and every single time you have every single time you're taught that you get to a point in life where you're old enough and you realize I have to unlearn all of these bad habits because I'm not putting myself out there. I'm not strong enough to, you know, stand up for myself. I'm not branching my own path. And even if you don't want to, you know, create your own full path or create your own business or create anything like that, you can still feel like you're strong and secure enough to stand up for yourself and in what you feel is right. And so we should be able to teach our children that same message, to be bold and to be sure in what they think and what they believe, because that honestly is what's going to keep all, keep our culture going. If we keep teaching our children to be fearful and to be afraid and to merge in, you know, to, to a certain set of roles, we're going to immigrate to these new places. They're going to merge into the set of those ideals and then those American ideals or British or Australian ideals that we don't want, that you don't want your children believing are going to be exactly what they're growing up with and what they become because you're teaching them to fit a certain role of expectations instead of to be who they are and to actually represent what they truly believe in. And I feel like when more, when more children feel like they're accepted by their Indian culture and don't feel like they have to contort themselves to fit into that culture and that lifestyle, they will be more proud of it and more you know, excited to be a part of it. Because when you find love in people that accept you, then that's where you want to be. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to abandon that. But when we're not allowing our own children, our own family members to feel that level of acceptance, unless they've checked off a bunch of 
things on this arbitrary list of what they should be, then we're forcing them out. We're telling them that you're not acceptable unless you're all of these things. And if they happen to be not one of those things, either intrinsically or on purpose, they're cast out. That makes them feel like they are just not even important. That makes you feel like you as a person are not valued enough for anyone to stick around or care for you. And you might as well not even be a part of that family at that point. You know what I mean? So it's not always that extreme, but that's a lot of the thoughts that go into it, you know, and we've all had extreme thoughts like that at one time or another. I honestly don't know a single Indian person online or in real life that isn't hiding at least one thing from their parents or from their extended family. And that's a terrifying thought to have, especially because when you think about it, our family is hiding things from other parts of our family and certain family friends are hiding things from other parts of, you know, their like extended circle. So it's like we're all hiding these secrets from one another and from our own parents. And if we were all more open, we could probably find more things that we have in common rather than things that keep us apart. But instead we choose to live in like these bubbles of shame. And I just don't think that that's truly healthy for anyone. That's causes, that's what caused us to have depression and anxiety and feel completely isolated because we are taught that, you know, we have to be at our highest form of behavior at all times or else we'll be completely exiled. And I think that as much as we should be on our highest behavior and we should push our push each other and push push ourselves to do better, we still all make mistakes sometimes. And if one mistake or one wrong turn is going to get you completely cut off, then that is terrifying. That means you either have to play it safe your entire life or it means that you have to um, just be something that you're not and just do what other people want of you and never get to enjoy the process of self-discovery which is a great part of life and even if you're in more of a communal communal culture and society and you think that way a little bit more and you're not as individualistic as someone that maybe grew up in america there is still a, a part of yourself that wants to learn your personal family heritage and history and you should be able to learn things about yourself that make you valuable to your to your family and to your extended community. And so there is some level of self-discovery or even um, honing in of a certain talent or a certain thing that you're especially good at because that's what makes you valuable to everyone else around you. So even if you're in that communal mindset, there is something to be said about individualism and about self-discovery. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that in our economies these days, um, wherever we are in the world, we're rewarded by finding out what our talents are, by dis by self-discovery, by honing our individual talents, by finding out what's different about ourselves and putting that out there, whether it's, you know, on YouTube or on, um, you know, some sort of podcast or being an influencer on Instagram, or even if it's not in that world, even when it comes to an app developing company or a startup, there's so many startups that only have four, five, six people working in them, and that's because each of those people has a specific, distinct quality and talent and trait that they're bringing to the table that everyone else can benefit from and can balance out um, what everyone else's skills are. So it's really important to be able, in just our economy period and in order for us to succeed, to be able to know what we can bring to the table, what's special about us, what's unique about us, what are we exceptionally good at, because yes, we have to know a little bit of everything, but if you don't have something that you personally are bringing to the table, then you become more replaceable. If you have something that only you can do, that is something that people will value and people will associate with you, and that becomes something that's almost untouchable because no one else can compare. You're in a separate category. So no matter how much you believe in community and family and people, you know, benefiting one another, it is important to know what makes you tick and what makes you special and what you can add um, to everyone else's experience. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on is that is basically the idea of generational patterns. So what I mean by that is we all know the struggle of not being supported by our parents in one way or another, whether, you know, it was that one day that we got a 95 instead of a hundred on our test, or, you know, if we're girls and we started wearing makeup too early, or as women, if we are not, you know, feminine enough and don't wear enough dresses and, you know, have an edgier style, that can be an issue. If we want to cut our hair short, that can be an issue. If we want to dye our hair, like there's so many things that could the tiny little things that we do that completely disappoint our parents that are things that are just fun that we want to do that we don't think are big deals. So there's two things that can happen. 
we either associate our culture with being extremely restricted and not being allowed to do what we want to do and not being who we are, or we end up trying to subdue ourselves and not be as out there and then have, you know, kind of like this repressed idea around it that makes you feel like there was this part of yourself that you never explored. And so when you see other people thriving or doing that or your own children doing that, you get a little bit caught off guard and a little bit scared. And of course, like these are generalizations. There are plenty of, you know, supportive Indian parents out there. I'm not trying to say that this applies to every single person, obviously. Um, and there's obviously different varying scales of it, but you can get to a point where you have cut off so many things that you wanted to do, or maybe, you know, if it's in our parents' generation, there were plenty of women that wanted to be educated more that weren't able to, or weren't, you know, phys really allowed to because they had to start, you know, being a wife, they had to marry younger, they had to have kids, they had to fulfill their roles and duties to this greater societal expectation, and they had a lot more to lose. There wasn't really an option for them. For us, even if we cut off our whole family, at least there's an option for us to survive and live in the world in most cases, in most experiences, at least in a lot of, you know, first world countries, especially if you don't have connection with your family in America, you can still move to another part of America and just live your life and no one's really going to judge you. Whereas our ancestors didn't have the same privileges and didn't have the same opportunities. So back then you could see how, you know, a woman would have to not be able to do anything that she wanted to do. And while in some ways that might make her extra supportive of her child, in other ways that could also make her resent her child's own opportunities that they get. And so that in itself can be really detrimental to the child because they are, you know, being forced to do what their parents had to do because of their parents' ongoing resentment. And that's how general generational patterns begin. You know, one person has this kind of set of traumatic issues that they went through that they weren't able to fully deal with or come to terms to, but it was because it was just something they had to do. And then that trauma gets passed off onto their children and their children and their children. And that becomes like these negative generational patterns. And that's not what our culture is. Our culture is beautiful and thriving and fun and loving. It doesn't have to be this like, restriction oriented thing where we feel like we you know are in straight jackets and can't be ourselves that's not what it should be and we should take this opportunity as women who have so much more opportunity than our ancestors to create this culture and this community that we genuinely want to be a part of and i really want to hear what your experiences are as an Indian woman or as a Desi woman, or even if you're not a woman, um, or if you're not Indian or Desi, but you have Asian parents and can relate to a lot of this, um, whatever your experience is, I want to hear what you can relate to, what you wish would change, um, what you wish could be different, because I want this to be a starting point where we can start to talk about what we need to do to make our culture and to make our generation even better and even more sustainable because it is coming to a point where we could in a sense maybe lose our culture or just change it so much that you know we become so far removed from it because you know we immigrate to different places and we become that that becomes our culture and our identity and our nationality and so those things can kind of make us feel like we're losing sense of what it means to be Indian or Desi, and that's not what I think should happen, but I also think that what it means to be Indian or Desi should be changing and should be, you know, evolving. Um, so I'm really, really excited to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Again, by no means am I trying to generalize anyone's experience. Um, I'm talking a lot about my own experience and other stories. Um, that I've heard from friends and from people online. So that's what I wanted to talk about. I will put up the links to follow me up here and in the description below, along with some of the subreddit communities that I was talking about earlier. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I love you guys so much. I will see you next week for another video. Happy healing.